Okay, so this is um, a little about data modeling before we hit relational graph management. And we're going to work with stuff that Michael had mentioned this morning, a little about the telephone things, and then Dave Knight went into more detail about telephones available by company or by person. We'll look at a couple different ways of doing it. We'll look at some of the no nomenclature that's used in data modeling. And comments um, from people especially know, know this pretty well. More than welcome. Okay. So... We'll start off with some, some symbols that we use. Now that you know data normalization theory real thoroughly, right? Uh -huh. It's all, all memorized, right? <laughs> you know about the pop quiz coming up, right? Okay, great. So, <clears throat> for our, our purposes, really simple stuff, right? That's going to represent the table or an entity in which we're going to keep like types of information. Then there's going to be connections between the two different, between the different tables done with lines, right? And I'm going to draw a series of lines to show you different types of connections. If that's one table and we were to have another one that we we're going to tie it to, but we're not going to do it, table two, conceptually, this will relate the two tables. If I were to put a line across at this end, that means that for this table, we'll, we'll, we'll have one record associated with the, at this table end. Likewise, at the other end, if I put a line up here, that means this table is going to have one record over here. If I were to put let's increment it, two lines, so this is one record, this means there will be one and only one, and it's mandatory. Generally, we don't use all of the conventions, but to know them is really good. So if we have two, that means that there'll be one here, there'll only be one. There'll be no more than one. If there are possibly many records in table two to relate to table one, we'll do the crow's feet, just implying it branches out into possible many. Okay? So it keeps going. If it was optional whether or not table one, let's say that this is a, a client and this is customers. If he, maybe, oh, excuse me. Let's say this is a, a business and this is their customers. If that business had no customers when they started out, we draw it with an O for optional, not necessarily any records related down here. However, if it's drawn with a crow's feet and a bar, that means there will be records, at least one, not necessarily many, but at least one, kind of like here. This means one and only one, and this means one or more. One or more. But at least one. But at least one. Now, it can happen at both ends. We may have, we're going to do it in terms of uh, clients, customers, and uh, clients, um, staff, and phone numbers in a minute. But it may be that when you create, let's say, a, a staff member, that that person on creation of the staff record has to have one record created at the same time. So this would be, you would have to implement this to force to make sure that well, as this is created, this record gets created along with it, kind of an automated procedure. Okay. <clears throat> it could be, if this is a staff member, it could be, but I doubt it. could be that that phone number, this isn't necessarily show associated with anybody. One of the companies bought a list of phone numbers, but they haven't employed them. So it could be you have phone numbers that don't have any relationship to anybody for a period of time, and later on it gets associated, and then that would, would create one or more records. So it could be that that phone number applies to multiple staff, so it could go this direction. It could be optional, it could be mandatory. So the basic breakdown in one-to-one one-to-many relationships is that you're going to have mandatory or optional. We can do the optional one here. Forgot one. So it could be optional here that it has one record. It could be mandatory or it could be more flexible. Does that make sense? And this can happen in either direction. And we're not even talking about join tables or one-to-many. Just kind of getting the nomenclature down. How's the more flexible different from uh, optional? 
it means it's not defined in the user requirements. If it's if it's optional that a staff member, let me draw it down here a little further. If it's optional that a staff member has a phone number, maybe he just got hired and doesn't have a phone, right? There's going to be one record. If it's optional, we put the O. If it's not um, known that it's optional or not, it's kind of implied optional by, by not putting the O, that there could be one, but not necessarily. <coughs> this means definitely. Without that, then we don't, we don't have any business rules around it. But if we did have a business rule that said, oh, they could or not have phone numbers, we might do that. That's where it gets a little lenient. It depends on how clear you're defining the business rules. In general, when we draw up entity relationship diagrams that include these kind of things, we may not include all of the second crossbar, so the O's for optionals. We may just draw the, the one to many. It may just be as simple as this, um, tying two tables together. It may be many, a one to many. We may go this far as to show that this phone number generally relates to one person, but he may have many. We may do it that way. Business rules can be a little flexible. But basically, that's the nomenclature involved. It's also worth stating that there are several different approaches to doing this kind of graphing, and some of them are similar but not the same. Right. And so this is one convention that's pretty right. common used in, in the industry, right. in software industry, not just in FileMaker or SQL, but around the world. Right. And there's different, there's different variances, right. And it's a little loose-knit. I'm kind of giving you the basic emblems, symbols that might be used. But I want to start with looking at a couple different ways of dealing with companies, so we'll singular, right? We'll use the singular condition, company, staff, person, and phone. And generally when we determine that we're going to break out categories of data, we use it in singular fashion because a table that will have phone numbers in it, any particular record in that entity, it would be a phone number. Any particular company in that table would be a company table. Even though there might be many companies in the table, we look at the instance of one record. So we'll start in terms of that. So if we did have companies and we determined for the data normalization process that the companies should exist in one table and staff people in another, if we'd gotten that far and determined that we'll keep the phone numbers separate because there might be multiple phone numbers tying to either the staff or the company. And there might be multiple staff people to a company, and there's going to be multiple companies. We've gotten as far as already determining through our data normalization process that we're going to have these three tables, and I'll just take this as a small subset of what could be a system that may have 150 tables. How many tables have you got in your system and keep this? In the general module, let's say. Three or four hundred. Three or four hundred. Okay, that's good. So we're going to just deal with three tables. Alan and I had this talk a couple years ago about a couple different ways to go about it. I don't remember that conversation. But I've seen different ways of going about it. So just to kind of separate that from what we're going to draw, find it kind of works. Generally, if you have a company and it's one facility, and all your staff is housed in that facility, and you have a phone system, you have a number of phone numbers with extensions, and each person has a phone number, right? And then they may have a cell phone that's personal, and they may have a fax line that's shared among different people, right? That's for everybody working in one facility, but with the advent of the virtual office, you may have one person working for a company who also works for another company, like someone who's a broker, or like a greeting card sales rep, or an insurance broker, or a um, another example. Independent programmer. And you get, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. A FileMaker developer, the subcontract, and other FileMaker uh, contractors, and subcontracting to other people, and he's got an office. He might have a couple offices, right? How many offices you got out? You've got one in the Palm Springs, right? You got two. You've got two offices. So there becomes a question of, well, I've got phone numbers for my people, and I, but I've also got phone numbers for the company. So how are we going to relate this? Right? So we'll look at two different approaches.